I'm on a root beer roll today. Almost looks like a beaver. Is that a beaver skull? That is a beaver skull. Oh, looks like I found something. Found some oysters. I don't know if they're any good. Welcome back everybody. Silas here today. We're on a mushroom hunting adventure. Unfortunately, my camera was on a time lapse when I recorded this intro initially, so I don't have that footage, but stay tuned. Let's go out there and find an adventure. Also, as I'm out hunting today, just in case I don't find any mushrooms, I am gonna pick up any aluminum cans that I find. Try to clean the environment up a little bit. I'm not gonna pick up the plastic just because I don't have a big enough bag for everything, but I figured if nothing else, I'll save the aluminum cans. When I was a little kid, my dad and I would come out to the lake and we would go out there just to, just to goof off because there wasn't much going on. And uh, we'd pick up aluminum cans, that way we could make a little money at it. But anyway, I'm kind of checking a new area. A few years ago, all of this was underwater. And so I'm hoping the water table is still high enough here to keep the ground moist and maybe mushrooms will grow. The only issue I see with this area is it's not really the right type of trees. In my area, the main trees that grow mushrooms are elms and cottonwoods. Now I say that mushrooms will grow wherever mushrooms want to grow. They're a very finicky mushroom and they basically do whatever they want to do. I have found them in the most random and obscure places you could imagine. That being said, there are a few things they like, like I say, around this area, cottonwoods and elms. I know out in eastern Kansas they grow around oaks and sycamores and other trees, but we don't have those type of trees around here. And another thing you want to look for is recently dead or dying trees. Once they're really dead, like these trees here, all the bark's gone off of them, most of the nutrients are gone out of these already, so the mushrooms won't grow around those. But if you can find, like years ago, about four or five years ago, there was a major, major tornado or microburst or something went through a, a reservoir near here, and it wiped out a ton of trees. And that following spring, all those trees were half dead and starting to die, and we found buckets and buckets of mushrooms around those trees, growing out of where the roots used to be. The year after that, we found quite a few, and the year after that, I think I found three or four. So the key is recently dead or dying trees, and so that's what I'm kind of looking at now is all these trees here kind of halfway blown over. I'm hoping that maybe there's some poking out of the roots. You can see how this tree's starting to rip out of the ground. This would normally be a really good area. But just because it's a good area doesn't mean they grow there, if that makes sense. I've seen many trees ripped over like this that did not have mushrooms. But I've also seen many that did. And so we'll keep gallivanting through the woods and see what we can find. Another thing is, is you've got to be willing to walk because you can't expect to go in the woods for 20 minutes and find mushrooms. Some people do. Sometimes you get lucky. I've gotten lucky like that before, but other times I have hiked for an entire day without finding any at all. I'm also on the lookout for oyster mushrooms. I don't know if I'm going to find any of those. It's been so dry that those probably aren't going to grow this year, but that's not going to stop me from looking. Found another can. It's been a while since I found a can. We're actually by a reservoir right now, and so people throw their cans overboard get some of the dirt off of it and out of it so I don't get dirt in my mushrooms if I do find any but people throw their cans overboard because they're too lazy to put them in the trash and so then they float up here in the trees now like I say normally about oh it's been about I forget how many years ago now it's been a few years but this entire area flooded but normally this is the bank the edge of the reservoir right here this kind of high rise area we'll walk out here and I'll show you where the reservoir is at now but first we're gonna make a detour for what's left of another can I'll get some of that dirt out of that one. Like I say, about three years ago, the water came right up to this area right here. Now the water's out there. Way, way out there. We'll go out there and check it out. Now the last time I saw the water this low was about, oh man, I was just a teenager. So it would have been almost, probably about 15 years ago. Yeah, about 15, maybe a little more, 16, 17 years ago. They are working on the dam. So they drained the reservoir a little bit. Some big old clam shells out here. I might take those home for my kids, they'll appreciate those. But my friends and I, we would come out here and we could actually drive around out here gathering up firewood and we'd make gigantic bonfires in open areas like this because there was no risk of fire. You gotta be careful, you can't get too close to the water because you'll get stuck, but as long as you stayed up close to the shore, you could drive around. We had big four-wheel drive trucks, make some big old bonfires, had a lot of fun. There's a bunch of shells out here big ones. I have to keep my eyes out. i find some better ones than the ones I got already. But this water here used to flow up in there and there's like a little cove up in there where people used to launch their boats and then they would take their boats out into the lake. You can kind of see the channel still running out there but uh, now instead of being a cove it's a little tiny trickle to a mud puddle. Where I'm at right now at one time was about three or four feet of water. 
and right now it's no water. I don't even know if you can get your boat out here on this lake now to fish. I don't know, I think the main marina might have a little bit of water left in it over by the dam. But even then, I remember when they drained the dam the last time, nobody could get their boats out, period. It was impossible to get your boat out unless you had a four-wheel drive truck and you would drive out to an area like this and then carry your boat over and stick it in the water. But that wind is freezing cold out here in the open like this, so I'm gonna get back up to the trees. Look at all these dead carp skeletons all along here. I'm guessing at some point in time before the water started going down, they did a carp coal, kill coal, whatever you call it. I don't know how you say it. Because all the way down is dead carp skeletons. And I know what they would do is they would take nets. My dad used to do it years and years ago, way before he ever started a junkyard. He worked for the uh, state of Kansas or fishing game or something like that. And uh, they would go out and they would take nets and they would catch fish out of the lake. And if it was a carp, they would kill it and throw it back in the water and everything else they would just let go. Carp are kind of an invasive species. They're not really edible. They are edible technically, but they're not like fit to eat because of all the bones. And they compete with all of the other good fish, the bass and things like that, and crappie and walleye and whatever else is in this reservoir. And so they like to just kill them off every now and then. Oh, looks like I found something. Found some oysters. I don't know if they're any good. They look kind of dry. Yeah, those have seen better days for sure. See what's crazy, I was just out here probably about two weeks ago and I didn't check this side. I checked this tree even, but I checked the other side of it. If I would have seen those then, they probably still would have been good, but I don't think those are much good now. I mean, there might be a little bit of edible on those, but they're pretty on the rough side, dried out side. But there might be more around here, so I'll keep my eyes out. That's about the 20th turtle that I've seen, or turtle shell, I should say. <laughs> Turtles are long gone. Here's another spot here where I found a ton of mushrooms in the past. But these trees here have been dead for a long time, so I think they've pretty well stopped producing nutrients into the soil for mushrooms to grow on. We'll look it over pretty good, but I think I only found one here last year. We'll kind of look around here. When I first found this spot, it was just covered in my carpet. But this tree had just blown over the year before that year. No luck in that area. I want to cross what's left of this creek or what used to be a creek anyway. This used to be flowing water. It was always kind of cool because this is like a little waterfall area right here. And then it would flow on out. Well, and where the mushrooms usually are in this area, or used to be in this area anyway, last year I only found a select few around here. Used to find them by the bucket full. But that's been the story of my life for the last couple of years. With this ongoing drought that keeps getting worse and worse. If we have another year of drought, I don't know what we're going to do. Regardless of mushrooms, that would just be bad for everybody. Every now and then you find them out here in this low-lying area. But that used to hold water right over there. But now it's bone dry. There's no water anywhere close to here. Oh, check it out. <laughs> oh, man. I just saw the color. But that's not a mushroom. That's a foam ball. I got excited for a minute. Part of the thing I'm struggling with today is that I forgot my glasses. And I've got pretty good vision, but I've got a bad astigmatism. And so it's really hard for my eyes to focus, especially in these low lighting conditions early in the morning like this. But I'm gonna give it my best shot anyway. Hopefully I can find at least a few for a snack. There's always the possibility that somebody else already came through and found all the ones that were here. But I kind of doubt it. This is kind of hard to get here. I've been Hiking, I'm not even halfway done with this trip yet, and I've already got a mile and a half in, and I haven't even been zigzagging that much. So it's a pretty secluded area, hard to get to unless you know what you're doing. I just think they're not growing this year. And if there were one or two, the deer love them too, and critters and all sorts of things like to eat them, so it's very possible that what few were here already got eaten. There's some mushrooms, not the right kind though. Those are uh, mica caps, they are edible, but they don't really have much flavor and they fall apart really quickly after you pick them. So if you're not gonna cook them immediately, you don't really wanna mess with those. And like I said, they don't really taste like anything. They disappear to nothing when you cook them, but they're good for like soups and things like that. But I've never messed with them. Man, this is kind of depressing. This area used to be loaded with them. I mean, loaded with them and big ones too. Not seeing any. And there's one more possibility is that it's just too early like those mica caps that just came up those probably popped up last night during that rain so it's very possible that in another week or so there will be mushrooms here 
like I say, I'll probably be on a camping trip next weekend and the weekend after making videos for you guys. So I don't think I'll have time to come back to this spot. So we may not pick any from here this year. Hopefully there's some growing up there. That's further up north. Maybe they've gotten some more rain up there this year. I don't know. We'll see when I get up there. I haven't given up here yet though. I got a little more ground to cover. Still no luck with mushrooms, but check out what I just found. An old dad's root beer uh, bottle. I couldn't think of that. I'm tired. That's pretty cool though. It's got the mug on it. I don't think I've ever seen one like that. That's definitely a cool piece, so I guess that made the hike worth it. If you know how old that one is, let me know. I'm not sure what the uh, what the date on this one is. There's a mushroom. A little polypore. So small, I can't even get it to focus on it. Those aren't edible. I mean, they technically are edible, but they're edible in the same way that shoe leather is edible. <laughs> I mean, they're like eating a piece of bark or something like that. This area right here, exactly where I'm at right now. Oh, it's been a number of years back, about four years ago or so. I found a ton of them. That's mainly what I wanted to check was this spot right here. And there's another spot down a little bit further where I found a ton before, but right here by this old rotted log. That year, I found just tons of them growing all along here, but not this year. I kind of look through this whole area as I walk back to the other spot, but I don't have high hopes. No luck yet, but check this out. Old railroad spikes in this tree. <laughs> I wonder what the point of that was. I mean, obviously they did that before the tree died because the tree kind of grew around them a little bit. That's interesting. Just makes you wonder what the history was. And how long ago did they do that? I gotta say, this is really a bummer not finding any. This is the other area that I was thinking of. That I have found them at in the past, quite a few of them. But this is ideal habitat. Because you've got a mix of living and dead and half dead trees all through here. But unfortunately, there are no mushrooms. What the problem is, is that the mushrooms are actually just the fruiting body of what's called a mycelium. And the mycelium is the organism that lives underground. And so when they fruit in the springtime, every April, they pop up out of the ground, the fruit does, and that's what you harvest and eat. But the mycelium, in order to produce fruit, has to have moisture, and we've had no moisture in the ground, and so it doesn't have the nutrients or the moisture. It probably has the nutrients, it just doesn't have the moisture to spare to produce fruit. Which, one or two years of that isn't that big of a deal, but after multiple years of that, if there's no fruit, there's nothing to spread spores and start new mycelium networks. And so eventually, it can lead to where there's hardly any mushrooms at all, even on good years. And so that's why I say if we don't get some rain this year, for next year's mushroom season, it might be really, really bad. And actually what you really need is you need a cold winter with snow. And we barely had any cold weather this, this winter. There's only a few few times where it got below zero. And then I think we got a total of maybe three or four inches all winter long. And that's just not nearly enough. As much as I hate moisture out at the junkyard and snow and cold, you really need it for the mushrooms. And so I tolerate it. But this year has been a great year for crushing cars and cleaning up junk. But that's about it. It's not a mushroom. It's kind of neat though. A bone out of something. Not sure what that would have been out of. Looks kind of small to be a deer, so I'm wondering if that's not maybe a, a fox or a coyote or something like that. Hard telling. You know, that's something I haven't found any this year either is uh, deer antlers. Normally I find deer antlers every year, which it's a little bit late in the season. The best time to go shed hunting is more like February or so, February or March, and we're in April. But still, there's usually a few left laying around. This late in the season, a lot of times, the squirrels and other things will eat them. A couple years, I found complete skulls with the antlers on them and everything. One, you could tell it had been hit by a car and crawled back in the trees to die. And then the other one was just a skull laying out on the edge of the tree roof. So I don't know if coyotes dragged it off of the body or what the deal was. Well, I was just about done, but I couldn't give up that easy. So I went and checked one more spot. I've never checked this spot before. It looked promising. So I thought, you know what, I'll go check it out. And this is what I just found. The remnants of a deer, it looks like. Must have been a doe, though. Yeah, there's the spine and the ribs. Some vertebrae. I wish it was a buck. If I had a bag to carry it in, I'd go ahead and save that skull right there, but unfortunately, I do not, and I don't feel like carrying that in my hands all the way back. 
it's pretty well cleaned off it's probably been here a long time but i still don't feel like carrying it i still haven't found any mushrooms though it's just unreal this area out here is like prime area bunches of cottonwoods and elms and cedar trees but no luck one thing i did notice is that there's water kind of like a little puddle of water down here so that might be a good sign i'm going to check right through here it's starting to rain so i can't stay too much longer but we'll look a little bit at least this is a really good sign right here water so that means this ground might be a little bit more moist than other areas so maybe just maybe there will be some mushrooms around here i've never looked in this area before so it's all new territory got some promising trees here some dead stuff half dead stuff kind of mixed in so the ground looks about right so maybe just maybe found another school can't tell what this one is quite almost looks like a beaver is that a beaver school that is a beaver school that's pretty crazy <laughs> you hardly ever see beavers out here but that one didn't make it Look at those big orange front teeth huh interesting no luck on the mushroom front though this this place looks perfect it's real low lying lots of elm trees good ground cover but i don't know and another deer skull once again no antlers though just a doe well i thought i found a good spot with this creek but haven't had any luck yet it is good to see water again though it's been so dry for so long i tell you what i'm on a root beer roll today a mason's root beer that's pretty cool i'll save that for sure and right beside that another school maybe a possum or something like that can't quite tell man i can't believe there's no mushrooms growing along this creek it just blows me away and yet another skull and spine all still attached something didn't make it it's too bad i'm not hunting for bottles cans and skulls today <laughs> come out here looking for mushrooms and i find everything but one last little spot right here and then i guess i'll head back to the truck well guys no luck on the mushroom front i'm back in the truck now i did the best i could do even over there by that creek in that prime habitat with moisture i still couldn't find any another problem besides the drought might be the issue that we had a late freeze this year in the beginning of april it was still getting down into the mid 20s at night we'll see what happens with this moisture i'll probably go out next weekend and see if i can find any mushrooms again at a different location maybe the season's just running behind because like i say these things are very finicky very fickle you never know exactly what they're going to do so maybe the season's late maybe it's not coming at all sorry that the video kind of ended in failure i mean i picked up a bunch of trash found a couple cool root beer bottles and found a, a beaver skull that's something i've never found before Wish I could have found some antlers, but you know what? A bad day in the woods is still a good day, unless you trip and break your ankle or something like that, and then <laughs> it's not quite a good day. Altogether, I hiked about four miles, so I got a little bit of exercise in. It's about 11.30 now, so I guess I'm gonna go home and get lunch with the family and spend the rest of the day with them. But stay tuned. Like I say, I've got at least two camping videos coming up pretty soon. I'm gonna go out and do some fishing. If I can find water that's deep enough to fish in, I'm hoping I can take my kayak out at the place I'm going next weekend. I don't know if the water's gonna be deep enough or not. But stay tuned for that either way. As always, I hope you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day. And remember to get out there and find an adventure, even if it isn't a complete success. <laughs> like I say, there's no bad day in the woods. And with that, we'll see you all next time.